Councillor Cordova. Thank you. I've got a question. Well, firstly, to um, just say that I, I really support the principles outlined here of procedural fairness, transparency and public interest. My question is about that transparency element. And um, is there a point within the policy where it talks about um, the idea of letting the community know who's getting what and for how much to make sure that it's all fair? Um, is there such a register of leasees that's available to the public upon request, for example? Mr. Basham. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, there definitely is a uh, register. I have a, a copy of it here in front of me uh, tonight. Uh, I don't believe that it's accessible to the public as a direct document, um, but whether that would be uh, accessible via active disclosure or whatever other mechanism uh, is probably quite appropriate, and we can look into that. Thanks. Well, in that case, I think I'd like to move an amendment, if that's possible, to add a 6.1K and it would read something like this. A register of councils' leasees will be kept, including the address and the amount, and the register will be made available upon request for inspection at a public office of the council. You're, um, are you asking the mover and seconder to accept that, or would you like to propose an amendment? I would like to ask the mover and seconder if they think that's a good idea. Councillors Street and Reid. No, I can't. I can't agree to amend because I haven't given any thought to it acting there. Sorry, is that the full? That's not the full text, is it? Uh, no. So the no. full text that I just read out, and I've just kind yep. of made it up now, is a register of the council's leases will be kept, including the address or and the amount and the register will be made available upon request for inspection at a public office of the council. That's just the typical wording they use for, it's a register available for inspection. I'd be happy to hear from uh, staff or the general manager if they think it's a good idea or not. Um, would, you, would you like to make a comment, general manager? Uh, if I could, through your acting mayor. Um, Councillor Cordover, I understand um, where you're coming from, um, but the dilemma, as I see it, is that uh, if that were to be added uh, tonight, um, we don't know what impact that might have on some of the existing leasing and licensing arrangements the Council have, some of which uh, in the past have not been in open session, for example. Uh, I think we would have to take that on notice um, as a question um, be quite honest. If, if I might just comment, Acting Mayor, mm -hmm. the, so I think the idea is that um, there could be some legacy ones where the, you know, insert name of organisation here gets a really, really great deal and a very exact equivalent organisation who's a bit newer doesn't get a good deal. And I think in the, the objective of the whole policy is transparency and I think it would make eminent sense to just have that available upon inspection. Um, I'd be happy to kind of grandfather it in and say, well, from now on we'll do it. But in fact, that kind of yeah, what I'm talking about is just meeting the objective of transparency, so I think we should would do it. Would like, you like to move an amendment? I would Count like to, yes. Do I'd we like have a move. seconder for Councillor Cordova's amendment? Seconded by Councillor Fox. Councillor Cordova, would you like to speak to the amendment? Thank you, Acting Mayor. There is a possibility that... Firstly, Council provides a peppercorn rents to some wonderful organisations and I think those should be celebrated and we should really um, pay homage to the great work that those organisations do. And also, I think Council should get some credit for really facilitating the capacity um, of those organisations. Um, and then the second element of, of this is that we want to make sure that because the objective of the policy is to have transparency, that we actually um, put our money where our mouth is and, and have a transparent register that's available upon request for inspection at a public office of the council. And that way I feel like the, all the great community organisations will be able to um, see what's going on. I think the public will be able to see what great work the council does in facilitating the capacity building of local organisations. And it will just be transparent, which is the objective of the policy. So that's why I'm proud to move this amendment. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Cordova. Councillor Bastone on the amendment. Yes, to the amendment. I, this is the basis of the question that I asked in closed session and was not able to get an answer on, was 
about rent and things. Not everything we do is obviously peppercorn, things like uh, Drew Point, uh, the cafe and things there, I think are at commercial inconfidence, as was the question that I asked. And, you know, I haven't been able to get an answer yet. Uh, I'm not sure that, as I said, some things are commercial inconfidence, uh, the things like uh, rain and horn. I think that perhaps those things, peppercorn rent is, is different, but our actual commercial properties, I'm not sure that people should know. Thank you, Councillor Bastone. Councillor Street. Um, thank you, Acting Mayor. Can I say at the outset that I fully support the idea of transparency and, and openness in these matters. Um, my only point is this. I haven't considered this in any detail, this idea. Um, and so I'm not prepared to, to support the amendment this evening. Um, what I would suggest is that um, I would be prepared to look at an amendment to the policy subsequent. Um, when I've had an opportunity to consider matters of commercial inconfidence, um, matters that were in... The general manager makes a good point, I think, in relation to matters that were considered in closed session um, and the implications that it would have for those as well. Um, I'm not saying absolutely no, I'm saying um, it's a big change to make to the policy um, and I'd appreciate the opportunity to consider it in more detail. So that's the only reason that I'll vote against it this evening. Thank you, Councillor Street. Councillor Fox. Um, I'm, I'm feeling quite uncomfortable about the fact that many of our public assets are actually um, being dealt with confidentially and, and behind closed doors. I think it's very important for the community to know um, how our public assets are being used and that they all have equal opportunity to either um, apply to rent them or um, see that that they are used to the best advantage for the community. Um, whether in the past they've been uh, confidential agreements or not, I think this is a policy that should be looking to the future. And when for example, we have lease reviews, that information should also be public so that the person who originally might have leased a building a long time ago when there wasn't a demand for it, um, as they keep renewing the lease, that somebody else has an opportunity to outbid them or even to have the matter open and above board so that everybody can see how much they are paying and that it is to the benefit of that particular building or that the building isn't being allowed to run down, for example, as, a, as our council asset. I think it's a very worthy amendment worth considering. I, that's why I've seconded it. Um, and I thought by reading this um, policy that a lot of it is about transparency and openness why is it transparent and open about some things and not all things? It does concern me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Acting Mayor. I also support uh, the transparency, but like Councillor Street, I'd need more information in regards to fully support this motion and perhaps if staff could do some research in regards to... Uh, the legal advice perhaps regarding this and perhaps what other councillors, councils do in this instance, I would like um, some further information in regards to that. Otherwise, I think the intent of it um, is important. Thank you, Councillor Midgley. Councillor Reid. Thank you. Um, like a couple of the others that have spoken, I, the intent of the amendment, I think, is um, uh, very sound but I would like some further information from staff on that. Um, but it also does lead me to consider, um, and we had the discussion earlier about not-for-profit organisations and um, what our policies are in relation to that, and it makes me think whether we need an actual... Whilst this license, leasing and licensing policy touches on it, we don't actually have a standalone policy in relation to... Um, leases to non-profit organisations and if you look at the Hobart City Council they have like a six page one which goes through things like um, the capacity of the organisation to pay 
and so on and so forth. So I just want to foreshadow that maybe that is something that we should also be um, considering at to get that level playing field um, across not-for-profits because there are varying degrees of ones in terms of size and um, capacity to pay. There are ones that get huge amounts of government support. There are others that don't get any government support. So it's not kind of a level playing field when it comes to not-for-profits. Um, so it's kind of a uh, segue I've gone off there, but it's, it's, it is something that I think we need to work on for the future to, to make sure that we have that equitable situation within the not-for-profit area. So look, I thank Councillor Cordova for bringing the amendment. Um, I'd hope we can get some further advice on it, so I won't be supporting it, but I support the intent and I would like to see us do more work on the not-for-profit space. Thank you, Councillor Reach. Um, like most of my colleagues have expressed, um, I also support the principle of transparency, um, but I don't feel comfortable um, supporting this amendment on the run. Uh, I would need some time to consider the co commercial and confidence issues. Um, there are a number of decisions Council does make in closed session and there are valid reasons for that. Um, we get four days to consider our agenda papers and ask questions of staff and receive advice before we make a decision. And likewise, I would not feel comfortable um, to support this amendment at this point in time, but I do support the sentiment. Councillor Cordova, would you like to sum up on the amendment? Yes, thank you. I think this has been a really robust debate. And I'll just foreshadow now that um, because this is our opportunity and we don't want to have to wait five years, everybody's shown some interest in chatting about it. I'm going to foreshadow that if the amendment fails, and I totally understand the reason why it might, I'll, I'd like to move to defer this policy until a report is provided by Council. And the reason for that is that way we don't have to wait five years. We're in no rush, I think, to pass it. But there's some legitimate questions that have been raised by Councillor Reid and I think myself. Um, the more I actually think about this, the more I think that commercial entities are probably the main reason why we should have transparency, actually. Um, I think that commercial ones are even more important. Uh, the examples of cafes or real estate agencies or what have you. Um, these are community funds, they're community assets, and the objective of the policy is to be transparent. It obviously requires due consideration, and I would love us to consider that. I would love for the council staff to develop some thought, thought on that and then bring it back to us um, you know, in future weeks so that we can consider it. Um, the idea about letting the community know who gets what and why is the fair way to do it. It's the transparent way to do it, both for not-for-profits and I think especially for commercial entities, considering these are community assets we're talking about here, I think it makes eminent sense to, to look into this. And so um, I understand the trepidation about not wanting to do it tonight, but if that's the case, let's not wait five years for another review. Let's please defer this and then bring it back with a report that considers these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cordova. So we have an amendment moved by Councillor Cordova and seconded by Councillor Fox. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against? Aye. We have a division. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Councillor Cordova and Councillor Fox. All those against? Councillors Street, Bastone, Reet, Midgley, Wass and Westwood. The amendment is lost. Councillor Cordova, you did foreshadow a motion okay. to defer this until a report is uh, until it comes back with uh, with um, a report or some answers about what we've talked about tonight, so we can reconsider it before five years. Okay, motion def to defer, um, seconded by Councillor Midgley. Oh. I think there's a point of order here. He's okay. put the amendment. The amendment is lost. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, I would be happy to discuss it later on. And I think if that's the case, if this council wants to discuss it, we will. But to have an amendment lost, uh, you can't defer it. It's lost. I might seek some advice from the general manager. Again, point of order, because he has spoken to the motion. Um. Should we, oh, a deferral moved by Councillor Reid? Yep, I move that this matter be deferred until such time as we have a further report, as just discussed. And seconded by Councillor Midgley. All those in favour for a deferral, please say aye. Aye. Those against? The motion is deferred.